Okay, in this video I thought it might be interesting to show how I put together the design for the walking desk. I've never done a SketchUp video before, it might be kind of interesting to see how I do it compared to other people. So the first thing that I'm doing here, I've got SketchUp open, the first thing I'm going to do is pull it down to 3D Warehouse and I'm going to go looking for a model. And as you can see I've been searching for treadmills. Oops. Now I don't need a treadmill, I can design the desk without it. I have the dimensions that I need to work with. However, I just find that visually it helps me to just have this to work with. And the, the 3D Warehouse is a great resource for that. So I'm just going to download directly into my SketchUp program. And let's move that around this. For some reason, the person who designed this one made the model really big uh, that made the model really big so anyways so let's edit the model T for tape measure and this treadmill is 30 inches wide and the treadmill that we have is 20 inches wide so I'm gonna type 20 in the bottom right box there hit return and it's like do you want to resize yes I do and this thing disappears off the screen <laughs> So anyways, if I now pull out the tape measure, it is 20 inches wide, which is what we want. Now let's E for eraser, get rid of this, oops, E for eraser, get rid of this guideline that is there. Now speaking of getting rid of things, I don't want this upper structure, I just want the bottom treadmill part because the treadmill that we have does not have this upper structure. So let's start breaking apart uh, double clicking to get into the component and then into the component and then I can delete things now I've had mixed results with things that you find on the SketchUp warehouse some of them are really well designed and you can break them apart if you need to and some of them not so much this one I have found that I can break it down to just the treadmill which is what we want Okay, so I have the treadmill. Now, when I'm working on a desk or so on, what I often like to do is have a bit of flooring. So R for rectangle, and I will draw a big rectangle, and I'll say 12 foot comma 12 foot, and that gives us sort of a room size piece of floor. P for push-pull, and I'll pull it down just by an inch, just so there's some substance to it. Space bar, triple click, G for component, enter. And then over on the colors, I will B for bucket, oops, B for bucket, and then I'll go over here and I'll find some flooring. Let's pick some tile. And there we go. Now I have a floor that I can work with. Space bar, let's select the treadmill, M for move, grab sort of the bottom and bring it over and oops, grab the bottom and I'll just sort of, uh, oops, there we go, shift to hold that and pull it right down so it is right on the surface. So now I've got the treadmill sitting on a piece of floor. Now I can start working on the desk. And actually I'll start over here just so I have some room to work. Spacebar, R for rectangle. First thing I'm gonna do is the legs. Normally I might start with the top, but since I'm working off the floor, let me start with the legs. Two comma two, two inch square legs, P for push pull. Now my friend, we figured out the, the treadmill is four inches high, and so we're, we're going to aim for a finished height of about 49 inches. He found some ergonomic guides online where, you know, a standing desk is supposed to be roughly elbow-sized, and now you add four inches because of the treadmill. So let's pull this up, and I'm going to say 48.25 because the top is going to be three-quarters of an inch. Yeah, space bar, triple click, G for component, enter and I'm gonna want these legs to be tapered so let's actually let's hide the floor for a minute because I want to get underneath them and I'll put the tape measure and we'll put some guides on 1.5 1.5 and so I want to have this thing taper down to a smaller 1.5 on the inside and I think this is getting confusing now but this should be clear in a minute I'm gonna pull another line 12 inches up from the bottom now that's L for line and I'm gonna draw a line there and then 
draw a line there as well. Turn the leg back over. Spacebar, select just that corner edge there, M for move, and I'm going to move that in to the guide. And then the same thing here. Oops. Oh, oh, oh. Spacebar, single click to collect. So I'm selecting just that corner there. Spacebar, select that edge, M for move. There. There we go. Okay, now I don't need these anymore, so let's erase, 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 erase. Okay, so now we have tapered the bottom 12 inches of the leg. And let's, let's give it a bit of color. Now, I often like to use sort of wood coloring, so let's... Picked up some s templates online. You can you can find um, you can find wood grain patterns, and you can import your own templates. And I'm not going to get into that here. So, anyways, so I have a leg, and now let's work on the top. Um, now my friend wanted he asked me for like an 18 by 24 top. He wanted something fairly narrow. However, the treadmill is 20 inches wide. And you want a bit of gap on either side. So let's say I want 21 inches between the legs. And the legs are going to be 2 inches thick. So that's 2 inches and there's one on either side. So that's 4 inches plus 21. That's 25. And you want a bit of overhang. So I'm going to make the top actually 27 inches wide. So let's go R for rectangle. And I'll just draw it right there. But I'm going to say 27 comma 18 and hit return. And let's back off a bit. And there's our top. P for push pull, pull that up three quarters of an inch, hit return, space bar, triple click, G for component, enter, and let me do B for bucket, and I will give it a nice dark wood grain top, and except the grain is going the wrong way, we can fix that. So instead of doing the entire thing, we're just going to do the one face, space, B for bucket, hit hit that, and I've dropped that grain on, and now if you right click, uh, where is it now? Right, right click, texture, position, and then these pop up. And I can grab that green one and I can spin it around. Oops, spin it around. And now we've got the green going the right way. However, it is only on the one face. So B for bucket hold down the command key on the Mac, turn it into an eyedropper, turn it upside down. Oops, sorry, hang on. Spacebar, select just that face, B for bucket, and do it that way, and then the sides. We don't really care that much about the sides, but that's what you got to do. Okay, so now the top is, of course, touching the leg. That's no good. Let's move in a bit closer, spacebar, select it, M for move, and I'll move that out one inches that away, and another one inches that away. Now let's take the leg, M for move, grab that corner, start dragging to the back, hold the shift key so that we're constrained along the green axis, and I'm going to hit the option so I make a copy, and bring it right to the back, and grab that and back it up by one inch. And I'm on a Mac, by the way, which is why I'm doing options key. And I think it's the control key on a PC. I'm not sure. So R for rectangle. I'm going to break some upper structure down here. And let's, oops, oops. So three quarters comma three inches for a top rail P for push pull drag that to the other side spacebar triple click G for component enter now this is flush with the outside I don't like that so M for move we'll grab the corner and I'm going to move that in just a quarter inch and B for bucket and let's get this some color like the under so the green is the wrong way not going to worry about that too much now 
This is a very tall desk, 49 inches. If this was a low coffee table, this could be enough, or a low end table, but this is really tall, so I think it needs some more structure down here. So we're gonna do T for tape measure, and I'm gonna pull up a guideline, and I'm gonna go 14 inches, so that's just a two inches above where the taper stops. Again, R for rectangle. Draw another couple rails. This is three quarters, comma, and I'm gonna make this one smaller, just for aesthetics. P for push-pull. Pull it out to the other side. Spacebar, triple click, G for component, enter. Put some color on that, and then M for move again, so I can move it in, 0.25. Okay, now let's get rid of that guide. So. Now we have one side of our desk all set. And actually, let us do, let's, we can bring the floor back now and let me add an animation too so that I can, uh, I like to have some scenes in place early in the process because you zoom in and out so much that sometimes I just wanna be able to click to get back to a known position. Okay, so let's spacebar, select one, hold down the shift key, two, three, oops. No, I don't want the top, I want that. Now, so I selected each one and then held the shift key one after the other. M for move, grab the corner, option key to make a copy, hold the shift so it locks to the axis, pull it right to the corner, and then back up one inch, and there we go, except it is the wrong way around, so I will hold down the right mouse button, and I will say flip along red direction, and now as you can see, here let's uh, hide that floor again for the bottom, as you can see, it is, the taper is where it's supposed to be, oh, nope, the taper is not where it's supposed to be. Oh. I have to uh, flip these legs, flip along green, I believe, yep, and that one, flip along green there. Now, the tapers are on the inside. Okay, and as you see, I can just hit this and I get back to where I was. So we're almost done. We have the side structure, we have the top, now we need some con connecting rails, so let's go, rec oops, Rectangle again, pull that down, three comma, th three comma three quarters, P for push pull, bring that over here, spacebar triple click, G for component, enter, B for bucket, there we go, M for move, move, oops, hang on a second, G for component, there we go, B for bucket. M for move, grab the corner and pull that in a quarter inch. And actually, grab this one. M for move, grab that corner. Option, hold the shift key once we're locked on that green. Bring it up to the corner and then back it in one quarter inch. And now we've got the two top rails and we want a back rail as well. Zoom in, R for rectangle, and in two comma three quarters. P for push pull, pull it across, line it up with the other guard, space bar, triple click, G for component, enter, B for bucket, give it a bit of color, M for move, move it in two quarter of an inch. Now, I did not uh, the height is pretty close, but let's grab this front corner, start going up and down, shift to lock it into place, and then move your pointer over here, and we'll get constrained on line intersect plane. So now we have it the same height. Now I'm not usually that fussy about absolute precise measurements here because, I mean, a lot of this I will sort out in the shop once I get to it. And speaking of sorting out in the shop, um, as you'll notice, I did not do any joinery here. I didn't do mortise or tenon. Um, that is because in this project, I'm planning to use dowels, though I might, or, or uh, pocket holes. It depends on which we end up doing. Um, even if I'm doing 
other joinery, I, I will often skip it because I just want the sketch to show me what it's going to look like and give me the basic dimensions and then a lot of stuff I just work out in the shop. So we are just about done now. Let's grab that treadmill and let's bring that forward. And that fits nicely in between. Actually, let's uh, let's move everything back a little bit. We're getting off of our floor. Spacebar, move that. And that is more or less what we're looking at. Um, we've got the treadmill. We got a little bit of clearance on either side, so we're sure it's going to fit. Um, the height, I wasn't worried that much with the treadmill. I mean, I know the treadmill is four inches high. I did not try to make this treadmill four inches high in the model because I, I didn't need to. There was no need for that. So uh, dimensions is the one other things that I tend to leave until the end. Let's um, bring in the tools window and dimensions. Let's draw some dimensions on here, 18 inches that way. 27 inches that way. Sneak in there and grab that one and bring that down to the corner. 48 and a quarter. And if you want to have a look at what the whole thing is, you just get the top corner, grab the leg. And so the whole desk is 49 inches tall. And the legs are a 48 and a quarter. Now, if I want more dimensions than that, let's grab. Let's grab copies of the other parts. M for move. Let's option and let's just pull them way off to the side here. So I'm just going to speed up the video for a minute because there's just a bunch of tedious spinning and rotating and twisting as I sort of pull these sticks out of the 3D space and get them lined up together. And then I'm going to move and duplicate some of them just so that I have enough pieces that match what I will be needing to make. Okay, now the other thing, let me just skip to this point. Now that I have all these pieces laid out, I'll go to the camera, standard view, top, camera, parallel projection. And now I've turned this into a 2D and let me zoom in on this and let me add a scene. So now I have, and let's move that to the right. Let's rename this and I will call this parts. And then tools, dimensions, When it comes to laying out parts like this, I just find it's often easier just to turn it into a little, into a 2D drawing instead of a 3D drawing. And okay, so we have all the individual rail parts laid out. And over here, we have the whole desk in a 3D model and I've got the major dimensions noted and yeah I will either print this on paper to take into the shop or I'll take the laptop down to the shop and work from that and that is my process for putting together a design that I can then take into the shop so I hope you found this interesting thanks for watching and uh, yeah let me know if you uh, how bad I am and Thanks, Jay Bates, for all the stuff I've learned watching your SketchUp videos. I apologize for stealing your Spacebar Triple Click G for Component Enter line, but it just works so well. All right, I'm getting way too long here. Thanks very much. See you later.